Hello everyone, I'm Quentin, I'm the maintainer uh, and author of Gluten. Uh, Gluten is a VPN uh, client container. Uh, it's written in Go and this video is going to be about uh, setting up your development environment, uh, cloning the repository, forking it, etc. So first you want to go in the GitHub Gluten page. Uh, then you want to go in the wiki tab there, click there, then go at the bottom on the right side on the sidebar and you want to click on that development page. Okay, so this development page contains step-by-step -step instructions. Uh, it's not so detailed, but it's pretty detailed, I think, to get you started, but we'll go over what steps you should go through. So the first one is to sign in or register for an account on GitHub. Uh, I cannot reproduce that because I already have an account and don't have a spare email address, I guess. Um, Next, you want to fork Gluten, so you can just click on that link, and if I click here, it will open already. Uh, you can pick the owner, which can be your uh, username, and you can just click on Create Fork, and that will create uh, a fork of Gluten. Uh, and next, you want to install Git. Uh, Git, you can easily install it on all platforms. Uh, it's relatively easy to do. And Finally, you want to clone the repository, so you will need to open a shell um, or terminal or CMD or whatever uh, on your machine. Uh, so right now I already have this uh, and I'm going to clone. Uh, okay, so username, obviously I didn't fork it because I only have one account, so I'm just going to replace it with QDM12. All right. Okay, I'm cloning it. There we go. And then you want to go to the newly cloned directory. So we'll do this with the terminal. So CD uh, Gluten. There we go. Okay, now we are on the master branch um, in the Gluten directory. If I do ls, I can see all the files from the repository. So that's good. Now, the development environment is a bit of a funny thing uh, because Gluten is tightly coupled with uh, Linux things such as Unix and Cisco. Uh, you cannot develop it on Windows for now. You might be able to develop it on Mac OS X, but I haven't tested it, so I'm not sure. Uh, you can develop it for sure on Linux, so that there's no problem on that. But so my solution, as you can see, I'm running on Windows here on my host. Um, so the solution is to run your development environment in a container, uh, in a Linux container. So uh, that works on all platforms. It works on OS X, on uh, Windows, and obviously on Linux. Um, and everything is pre-configured for Gluten, it's really tailored for Gluten and Go and I guess my way of like writing Go code as well. So yeah, I recommend to go this way. Uh, there are, um, so to do that, you need to install the following. You, just, you need to install Docker or Docker Desktop if you're on Windows or, or OS X. Uh, you need to install Docker Compose, uh, VS Code uh, and the VS Code Remote Containers extension. So let's... Uh, yeah, by the way, that only works with VS Code, so you will have to use VS Code for that. So let's just open VS Code here. There we go. Um, now, what the extension I was talking about is called the remote container or something. Yeah, remote containers here. So as you see, it's, already, it's in pre-release, but it works very well. Uh, you can install it. It's already installed here, so I'm not going to uninstall and reinstall, but you get my point. It's quick to install as well. Um, Okay, so back to Chrome. Um, if you use SSH, you want to make sure Docker has access to your uh, SSH directory on your home directory. And you should have a .git config. If you don't have one, you should create it and make sure Docker has access to it as well. Um, so in my case, just so you know, uh, uh, in my case, the git config looks like this there. So in, in C, this is on Windows, it's in C users quantity git config. And so I have my name and configuration and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it can be useful. Um, okay. Otherwise it will create a directory and that will create a width config. So you, you can just create it to be empty if you want to. All right, now um, what you want to do is open the command palette in VS Code. So you can use control shift P uh, there's a thing you can open it with, uh, I don't know, I don't remember where you can open it, but yeah, there's a way to, oh yeah, there, in view, you can click on command palette as well if you prefer not to use the keyboard shortcut. 
So if you click there, and what you want to do here is uh, you can write open folder and this one, the remote containers, open folder and container. Just click this, click open. Okay, just give it a second. All right, you can click on this little blue thing on the bottom right there. It will show a bunch of weird Docker stuff. And basically it's starting, it's spinning up the development container. Uh, it's going to install all, all the extensions. Basically you will have the exact same setup I have. Uh, so that's nice, I think. Um, okay, so press any key to close the terminal. Okay, we close it. Now, uh, what I usually do, you can click on this little plus here to create a terminal in VS Code. Uh, that is, all right, there we go. You have this, and this is um, a terminal running in the container. So this is a, a Linux terminal. If I say, you name A, it's a Linux, blah, 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 Microsoft, yeah, because I'm running on Windows, so it's the kernel is Microsoft standard WSL2. And basically it's Alpine as well. So you, you have APK to manage packages if you need to. Uh, the different, the little extra full gluten, I guess, is that you have the WireGuard tools and HTOP installed. Uh, so you can do WG, I don't know, you can generate keys with WireGuard, for example, there, all right. Uh, but yeah, pre otherwise it's pretty much the same Go uh, image I use in other Go projects. Uh, but you have all the tooling you need, there's nothing else you need, so yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. And I keep on updating it, so yeah, it's it's nice. Anyway, uh, back to the web page. Um, yeah, this is development container readme. I can click on it real quick. And here are detail how it works, blah, 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 how to set it up, how to customize the image, uh, how to run other services, uh, et cetera, et cetera. But this is really extra. You don't really need to care about all this. There's also a section on how to set it up on a Linux host from scratch. Uh, you sh you probably don't want to do that. Even Linux, you should use a doc this Docker container. So I'm just going to skip that for now. Now, modifying the code. Um, okay, so let's say you want to add... Um, uh, what are we going to do? Let's say you want to add uh, another provider. So first thing you, you want to do... Okay, wait, let me zoom a bit. So it's clear for you guys. All right. So first thing you want to do is uh, you want to check out to a new branch uh, that will be relevant to what you want to implement. So in this case, let's say we want to add a provider called uh, dummy VPN. All right. So we're going to call it dummy VPN. That's it. Okay. Now git checkout dash b means uh, create a new branch. So we are creating the new dummy VPN branch. Um, and now we want to do modifications. So our modifications are going to be very simple here. Uh, we are going to just add a provider to the list of providers called dummy VPN, I guess. So that's what I'm doing there. All right. And you save it. All right. Now, in VS Code, you can um, you can click on that little refresh button, and it will show you the changes you made. All right, so you can see the VPN is line added. You can click on plus here. By the way, all this you can do in the CLI as well. If you want, you can do git status and git. Uh, ooh, that was weird. All right, you can do git status. Um, yeah, and then git add uh, to like stage the file and all that. If you are not familiar with Git, um, you can read about uh, using pull requests, uh, about the GitHub blog, write better commits, build better projects. There's plenty of resources out there. Uh, so that's a bit out of scope. I uh, assume you know a bit how to use Git. Anyway, so back to this, uh, then you can stage these changes. Uh, you can you should write a comment message, uh, well, I guess, uh, the me VPN. Uh, to the list of providers. Obviously, this is just a dummy commit, right? And click on commit, there we go. All right, and what you want to do next um, is make sure this uh, passes. So Golang CI lint is a meta linter. It runs a bunch of linters uh, and checks your code for you know health and stuff like that. Uh, so. Yeah, it gives a little warning, that's normal, but yeah, it passes. Like, if you check the exit code here, 
it's zero, so it passed, very nice. You can run go test as well on all the re repository, that's pretty quick as well, should take only a few seconds. <sighs> all right, yeah, everything passed, took 10 seconds. Um, and then finally you can, yeah, we're already committed. Uh, and so there are pages for how to add a provider, the product structure, but that's out of scope for this video. Uh, finally, if you want also to test your changes, you know, to make sure it works, you can build the Docker image with this. So Docker works inside the container because we bind mount the Docker socket from the host. Uh, so let's say we build it like this. Uh, the first time it may take maybe a minute to build, I think. Uh, the second time it takes like 10 seconds, uh, just because you need to download things the first time, but then it caches everything. Okay, so now we built it and you can run it. Uh, well, obviously this is not gonna work. This is some provider which doesn't exist, but let's just copy paste it and there we go. And it tells me, oh, it doesn't work, but you can try it with the right setting, the right username, right password, and see if it works or not. See if your changes uh, are making sense. And the final step is to publish your branch. So you're gonna click on publish branch here. I'm not gonna do it because this is going to publish it to my repository that is not forked. And then click on the open a pull request on the QDM12 gluten repository. So you can just uh, click here and you can pick your branch here. Um, obviously here it's my local branches, but it will show from your fork here. And you want to make a pull request to the master branch of QDM12 gluten. Um, so that's pretty much it. And then I will probably go back and forth with you with some uh, comments about uh, your code uh, or just approve it and merge it. And so, yeah, look, I'm, I'm happy as well to teach you if you need help. Uh, you can create a discussions as well. Uh, if you need some uh, some help to set up your environment or uh, you have something not working or you're curious about how to write Go, you need help writing Go. I love teaching uh, Go and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, feel free to ping me on that. And pull request can be very tiny. It can be a one line, can be a pull request for the readme, it can be a pull request for a single thing in Go. It can be a thousand line pull request as well. I will like each of them. Please allow me as well a few days because I'm really lagging behind all this uh, open source stuff. So um, yeah, give me at least three, four days to like look at a especially a big pull request. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I am going to make another video of how to add a VPN provider with a concrete example. Uh, so yeah, I will keep you posted. Thanks for watching. Bye.